This is the second episode in our series of fitting a VW van to be powered remotely. In this episode, we're using the engine's alternator to charge the lithium battery. There's just the standard one engine alternator fitted to this van. The first job is to find a sensible and short route for the positive and negative cables to be routed. The engineers are not using the frame of the van to return the negative. This can be a tricky task as it's important to keep the length of the cable to a minimum and use the correct size cable to reduce the voltage drop. In this install, to avoid the need for a secondary conduit, the engineers use double insulated cables, red for positive and black for negative. Correctly sized eyelet terminals were fitted to the cable's ends and covered with heat shrink. A 100 amp mini fuse and holder were fitted close to the battery on the positive feed. Many vans use an intelligent alternator within their engine builds. The vehicle's electronics can limit the charging current, but the engineers don't want this, as they'd like to charge the lithium battery using the highest and safest level available. To get around this problem, the engineers are installing a 50 amp DC to DC buck boost. The positive and negative cables are routed through the aluminium mounting sheet through nylon lock nut cable glands to the base of the buck boost. The positive is connected to the right hand M8 bolt and the negative is connected to the center M8 bolt. You will notice a second wire from each bolt. The positive is routed to the B2 port of the BMV 712 battery monitor so the monitor can see and log the starter battery details. The battery monitor will be detailed in a future episode. The black negative cable is supplying the negative feed to the BP100 battery protect. There are two smaller supply cables coloured green and purple. For this install the green cable which is connected to pin 2 is connected to the positive charge feed from the BMS. If the BMS disconnects this cable's current due to a charge alarm the buck boost will turn off instantly. The left hand positive is the output of the buck boost and is fed directly to the Victron BP100 Battery Protects M8 terminal, labelled battery. To program the buck boost, the engineers downloaded the Windows operating software TS Config from the Victron Energy website. This is the program's configure screen. The left panel monitors the voltages, currents, temperatures and other settings that cannot be changed. The engineers will be changing the settings in the middle and right hand panels for this install. The output voltage is set to 14.2 volts as this is the optimal voltage to charge the lithium battery. For this install the engineers are sticking with the default settings for the next five options. They have changed the power save mode after to 5 hours. After this time the unit will reduce to 7 milliamps as it turns the converter and LEDs off. Three traffic light LEDs on the front of the converter can be programmed to display at set voltages. They are leaving these at default settings. As the pin 2, the green cable, is connected to the BMS, they will tick option 29 to enable the Victron BMS lithium protection. When a lithium battery is in deep discharge, it's important not to charge it with a high current. So they are enabling the battery voltage charge protection and setting the voltage to 11.8 volts and the charge to 5 amps. If the battery ever goes down to this level, the buck boost will limit the charge voltage and amperage to protect it. The buck boost can be configured to switch on when its internal vibration sensor picks up suitable vibrations. The engineers want the buck boost to switch on when there are both vehicle vibrations and voltage sensed on the input. They select converter on off with vibration sensor 
and tick the Converter on off by input voltage option. They're happy with the default settings for the remaining options and click the Send All settings to the converter. Once set up, they turn the van's engine on for the first time and we can see the input voltage changes to 14.3 volts from the alternator. The unit was set to have a switch on delay of 15 seconds to allow the engine to settle and not strain it immediately. After this time, the unit starts charging the lithium battery using the alternator. In the next episode, we detail how mains electricity is wired into the van and how the MultiPlus charges the battery. As this is a Victron demonstration van, we also regulate the output of the MultiPlus using an isolation transformer.